What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man, Marv Glover. And the Diligent Village. <laughs> Are you ever? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. Go ahead, no, go ahead. let's do it again. The Diligent, Vigilant, Meticulous, Sagacious, Conscientious, Analytical, Methodical, Individual, the Chiseled Adonis. And you are now tuned in to the Whole My Nuggets podcast where we talk 50% sports, 50% real shit, 100%, 100% of, of the time. time. And if you don't like that, you can hold my nuggets. Suck my dick! Yes! Oh, boy. Episode number three! Yes. We man. here. We are here. We they are here. didn't think we were going to do it, but we did it. Your boy, Marv Glover, natural born lover, kiss a oh baby, my. tuck him under some covers and smack his mother. Whoa, we whoa, here. Whoa, wait, 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 we a minute. here. Wait a minute. You hold know, on. I just, that was hold just. On. Hold on. Hold on. We're not just going to let you walk past <laughs> kissing babies and tucking them under covers. What's yeah. going on over here? You know that. You, you know, know, R. Kelly just got convicted. No, 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 not like that. Hey, hey, <laughs> not hey, like that. Hey, listen, I was listen. Talk, I'm like parental, you know. Oh, parental, okay. Yeah, All right, yeah. That, that's what the parents thought, too. Yeah, but yeah. Well, we here. How, right. how you feeling, man? How, how's your week Sensational. Um, you know? It, it's been going sensational. Although I didn't mess up on the intro, you know, it's a little bit of. Yes, I've never heard hey, you mess up. I never, ever. I never have either. It's the first time for every time. Am I, am I making you nervous? Is that what You it is? make me you nervous? Know, absolutely not. You know, you see the arms out. Absolutely not. You see the arms out. Absolutely. Don't do that. There's no cut. You know, I I, th- I just came There's from. There's no cuts. You're, I, you're Nicole Brown Simpson listen, before the murder. Listen, you got no cuts. I, they, they think I just came from a sword fight. All these cuts on me. You know, <laughs> you know, you see it. You, like, show I don't think they see it. Show them. See you if see somebody it. sees it, they're, they're playing that Stevie Wonder challenge. Hey, well, we ain't talking about that we right now. We got see, a what lot. we got going on over here. See, <laughs> <laughs> we got to start out the episode with a little bit of comedy. Yes, for the people. Speaking of comedy, yes, sir. There was one of the kings yeah. of comedy in New York well, City. Well, we're not just the king. You talking about Goat Man? Goat Man. You know what I'm saying? That the, the one and only. Goat Man. Uh, w- w- what's that reference to? I don't know what that is. Ha Ha Davis. You know Goat Man when he says a thing twice. Oh, you mean repeat poppy? Yeah. Oh, him. Okay. Yes, All right. Go. All well, right. We, let's focus. We talking about the one and only uh, Dave Chappelle. Man, he, he's in. He, we're, for those who don't know, we're based in New York City. Dave Chappelle right now is doing his Broadway run mm-hmm. at the Lunt Fontaine Theater. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go see the man live just last night. You know, before this. Uh, podcast recording what was it yesterday was Thursday say Friday yeah it was fortunate enough to go see him and bro let me tell you I'm trying to tell you that man Dave I, uh, it was he, something special wasn't it it was it was well I mean okay he, here's the thing his hour super dope I yeah. think I'm a little upset that you weren't there to see it because the first 30 minutes you would have loved like the first 30 minutes I don't know if I'll go as far to say that the whole hour was yeah. better than his last one mm-hmm. but the first it his it's definitely more controversial and edgy. Uh was he talking about the uh, uh the the uh, uh um when they wrote about him in the New York Times? He touched on that a little okay. bit. Okay, all right. He, so he touched on that. He talked about the R. Kelly, uh, thing. Anthony Bourdain, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain. He talked about the Michael Jackson doc. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. And yeah. you know a couple other things. But here's the thing. This is what caught me off guard. It's not what he talked about because mm-hmm. we know Chappelle to be the guy that talks about the stuff not everybody wants to talk about. Right? Yeah. It wasn't that. It was how and what like the way like the perspective that he and i don't yeah. want to give it away mm-hmm. you know to ruin it for you you'll see yeah and if if he i'll say it like this if everything i saw last night is going to make it to netflix they're going to be a lot of upset like people within the lgbtq community going to be upset oh without question a lot, a lot of upset uh, oh, uh, oh yeah uh, white oh people. yeah it's going to be bad you know you know what uh, you know a uh, set is edgy i just i can't t- like everywhere you look all you just saw was just a bunch of white women just shaking their head in oh it was it, it was it was, it was, it was crazy it was it, crazy it was, it was you bad. know who's going to love it you know that that lady who had the drink with him inside the bar that's going to be great man oh you saw it huh Wait, whoa, wait, wait, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. You saw it. What are you talking when about? When did you see it? What are you talking about? Wait, wait, when did you see it? See what? No, stop. See what? <laughs> when, the, when, when you were going to tell me that you saw it? What are you talking about? When did you see it? When what, did I see what? When did you see the Chappelle show? Live? The Chappelle show? No, I watched it on, no, when it was no, on TV. No, when did you see Chappelle? What? You was just you just wasn't gonna tell me. What are you talking saved? about? When did you see it? See what? Answer the question. <laughs> this man thinks I saw something. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that was a nice, real. great show wait, you had wait, on yesterday. No, no, but regardless, no. wait, 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 wait. You were there? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what? my ticket that we had. Over. Wait, you was there? <laughs> yeah, I was. And you there didn't too. tell me? Yeah, when you burst the ticket, I could not miss it myself, so I had to pull up. Keep it spontaneous. <laughs> I was there in attendance as well. What? I was sitting in the where were you? Uh, the you are, F. I was very up oh, close. Oh, oh no, 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 you was there. I was, yeah, I was. I was so wait, close to wait. the front row. What? Yeah, yeah I was hey, so just, close to the front row. You just row. didn't. You just absolutely not. Why not? Because you were also going. It doesn't matter. I, I'm a little. I'm hurt. Were we both not in the arena? We don't need to sit next to each other. Okay, so th- now that you here, this just change. What do you think? 
Because you was there. Sensational. You're an asshole. But sensational. I feel hurt. I'm a little... <laughs> <laughs> but it was absolutely sensational. Okay. His misdirection and his ability to, you know, tell jokes. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it, I've never seen him live. Changed my entire perspective on how to write jokes. When yeah, I, I went threw, to my I, house. I threw um, my joke book out. Oh, I burned mine. I, I buried it. I burned mine. I canceled I, all of my shows. It's I back to the start. Yeah, I have no... For all the producers yeah. out there, I have no material. I thought I had None. material. Yeah. I ain't got shit. No. Because I, I seen Chappelle no. live. It was, it, yeah, it was yeah. Just, I was once a tadpole. I'm now a... I'm, I'm, I'm back. To be, yeah. I'm in the egg. Yeah. I'm in the egg yeah. again. It, it's really bad. Yeah. So you was there. Yeah, I'm not in the womb. I'm a, I'm a zygote. You was, <laughs> you were there. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell me, which is fine. No, I did see you. I, I, and I didn't see you. No, I saw who, you from across the street. Who are you with? I was by myself. Okay, so when I bought my ticket, you bought your ticket. Yes, how right much, after. How much did you? One hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Same here. Plus same here. Yeah, yeah. And you sat closer. Oh yeah. Oh, you an asshole. I was right. <laughs> I was in the um the F. I was. Oh, so, so you was a, right B, there. C, D, you was like four or five rows behind. Yeah. Yeah, I was You're, right you, there. You okay? Yeah. So you was there. So yeah, why did you? I was. I was going to ask a question when he did the Q and A, but I said if I did ask, my voice would give it away, and there would be a man with glasses. It wasn't that deep. I was would. trying to ask a question. I oh, was, I think I did see your hand. Yeah, was, it was hilarious how many people started shouting out, like, "Oh, answer my question!" When he was and not. He, and the questions that they, I only wanted to ask because the questions that they asked weren't even like valid. Yeah. It was pretty stupid. Like mm -hmm. someone, like there was a dude in back was like, "Hey, it's my birthday. Can you sing?" Happy oh birthday? yeah, it was ridiculous. And yeah. then there was another late dude in up top. He was like, "Why do you look like a, a ripped leather?" Oh yeah, couch? he said a, a, a faded leather couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like but that. But you were there, so yeah, we, yeah. we we got we don't have great, so much. great, absolute seller. Do you uh, think uh, it? Do you see his last hour? Um, he could, you know, he put the two out, the Birds Revelation and the, yes, yes, I saw. So both. you saw it. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is better? Um, I think I'd have to watch it on Netflix ne in order to, ha to judge it correctly. Because gotcha. being there in the ambiance of mm -hmm. Chappelle and how everything started with DJ, everybody hands go, up, and then it started right. Oh, that was beautiful. Okay, but um, yeah, it was sensational. But that's uh, the uh, but I do think mm -hmm. this hour was better than that because the way his first thirty minutes, like you said, mm -hmm. absolutely sensational. Right, the way that he talked about certain sort of things, the misdirection, how he tied everything together right. and then to at the beginning of the show to tie it in with the end right. it's just it's a master it, at work it was man he talked about the whole job i love the jesse smollett joke oh yeah hilarious um uh what else the uh, the, the 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 shotgun thing at the end mm -hmm. with the obviously we, we don't want to give it away to yeah. people who haven't seen it or whatever but i thought it was phenomenal um the only thing i didn't like about it like i, I was that's what i was trying to say the being i love the hour i didn't love the show Okay. Because I was fortunate enough, I think, two years ago to see him at Radio City. Yes. And that was an experience. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, and I keep saying this over and over, with a guy of his magnitude, this isn't just a regular headlining stand-up. Yeah. This is one of the greatest ever. Yeah. So I think what's important for shows that he does, especially in theaters and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like if it's a comedy club, whatever, but if you're talking about like a theater or whatever, anticipation is so important. Like ah, the building okay. of that, you know, okay, we're here to see Dave. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At Radio City... Uh, there was a couple of like Ashley Barnhill. She mm -hmm. opened up. She did ten minutes for him. Mm -hmm. Then Solange came out because okay. it was a mix of music. And ah, okay, all right, all right. She I did see, twenty. Yeah. Then Will Sil Vince, uh, you know, popular uh, comedian within the city, he did five yeah. quick. And then Donnell Rawlings, we all know yeah. who that is. Mm -hmm. He came out and did like fifteen, twenty, and then Dave. And came then Chappelle. Out. Okay. So it was just enough to the point where like there was a there was they built up enough anticipation yeah. to like where you're clamoring to see him, mm -hmm. but not too much to where it's like the audience is tired. Yeah. Whereas yesterday, as you saw. Yeah, it was one comedian. Yeah, no host, no nothing. Yeah. Just Ronnie Chang. Just got yep. up there. Shout out to Ronnie Chang. Google. And might I add, sensational set. I enjoyed. I thought he, I thought he had yeah. a pretty dope. I enjoyed set. it as well. I, I didn't like how like it was just straight Asian stuff all the way yeah. through. It yeah. got a, it felt a little repetitive to me, but it was it still did. funny. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from regarding yeah. like it being repetitive, but I think the way he delivered certain sort of because it, it it almost went back to um how Chris Rock how he has like the taglines right. and some of his say was like tie 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 and he keep right. going with it. So I guess in this case he's like oh we Asian we don't yeah. care. So yeah, it was like all right. So I like it was a nice. It was dope, but all in all, man, it, it was it was a dope experience. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I can't like you said. I want to see it on Netflix because yeah. for me, Chappelle is the only live stand up that I've seen where the live experience translated perfectly to Netflix. Like I yes, saw Rock yes. live, mm -hmm. um, and then when I saw the special, I was like Meh. I saw Kev live, mm -hmm. and it was dope. But then when I saw it on Netflix, I was like, so we'll see what happens yeah. with um, with. Uh, I'll uh, have to uh, see that with uh, Bill Burr, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, his definitely. next special when he puts it out there, I want to see it because I did see him right. live uh, multiple times. Right. So um, I don't know how it translates, but seeing him live, it is it, it's hilarious. And right. um, one of my friends, he actually went to go see Chappelle, mm -hmm. uh, I think two days ago, no, mm -hmm. three days ago, mm -hmm. um, and he saw uh, Donna Rawlings opened up. Got so him. I guess he's been having different different like there were, yeah, yeah. the the night that we had the blackout. Bill Burr was supposed to open up for. Him. Oh yeah, I think he did he because did, I yeah. think they ended up going to yeah so every night is someone it's not ronnie chang all the way through it's yeah. different but outside of the Chappelle thing the reason why you know we're able to sit down and have this conversation that we have in is because you're a comedian yes i'm a comedian mm -hmm. we Allegedly. out here in this in this new york city comedy grind where it gets it gets
what a lot of people see is they see the shows, they see the, the sometimes they see what is, you know, even though we're on the come up, the glitz and glamour, whatever that may mm-hmm. be for us at, on the come up. But they don't see the behind the scenes that you and I know that we go through, especially you, because you, you grind your fucking ass off. I, I have to commend you. Well, on pause. Well, you, oh, know uh, I mean, yeah. right? you know what I mean, right? You know what I mean. But, of course. but I got I got to ask you, man, because you, you're you, we're both in a somewhat of a similar situation. Mm-hmm. I work to a certain degree. Yeah. You don't. Nope. You're 159 percent full time. Why? Why? You need money to a certain extent mm-hmm. to ma- manage this grind, but for you, why is it that you don't want to try and manage? Because we've talked about this a little bit off camera, but why don't mm-hmm. you feel like you want to manage the whole day job comedy thing and you want to just go full fledged comedy? Because I want to have my one hundred and ten percent focus on comedy, all right. things comedy. Because right. that was the whole purpose of when I worked, I saved every dime and I lived pretty much like a hoarder mm-hmm. of my money. I mm-hmm. did not spend. I remember when I was in college, my final year, mm-hmm. the full calendar year, the first semester, I only spent forty dollars. What? I didn't, Wait, yeah, what? Only forty dollars on what? Hmm? On what? It was isolated times. I had food when I was off campus because gotcha. my my car did not gotcha. work. But I try. I tried my best in the entirety of 2015 when I made the decision I'm going to be a comedian. Mm-hmm. But I looked at it as I'm not going to do any mics. It's just going to be a whole year in right. preparation to 2016. Me jumping into it, whether it be social media. I was mm-hmm. off of social media. Um, throughout 2015, all I did was work. I saved up thirteen thousand mm-hmm. because I listen. I listened to a ton of different comedians talk about their stories of how they started. And Bill Burr, his was very. It stuck out to me because he mm-hmm. said, "Hey, I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna work, save all my money, and then I'm gonna move mm-hmm. to New York, and right. bam, I'm going." So when I saved that thirteen thousand, I lived off of that for until I found another job during the time I took all that bread I saved it. And the past two years, I've been. You know, although that thirteen thousand is no longer here, mm-hmm. but um, we don't talk I worked. We ain't, we ain't I worked. Yeah, we ain't talk about that right now. <clears throat> Accounts <laughs> overdrafted, credit cards maxed out, <laughs> uh, student loans. They calling at my door. It's, Am I paying any of them? Not, nope. not, not getting a dime. Basically, not a dime. you know, um, I don't want to have to go back right. to having to work. And I made a promise to myself, and I'm a man of my word. It could be one of the things that you know it stops me right. from elevating because I say I will fall on my sword. I will right. die before right. I go back and get oh. another job. So <laughs> I saved all of my money. I have um I invested here and there, so I have some of the investments. But now, after three years of doing the social media grind, I have been blessed to have patrons. Beautiful. So I have some people who do donate to the cause. Beautiful. So there's a little bit of money that's there. It's not a lot, right. but it's enough to where I see there's you know right. there's progress right, that's right. there and regarding with the stand up we did go two different um directions yes, we did. and how we did in comedy because we both started doing you stand up and also video right. but I decided hey I'm going to go towards video and build it up you said I'm going to go towards stand up and now we're, we're both, both coming back you know? around but the grind you know it's it's real. It's real because it's you know real. it's funny. Before I went to go see Chappelle, I actually did a, a mic? mic. Yeah. How'd that go? Oh, terrible. Oh, terrible. <laughs> where, where where were you at? I was at uh, Greenwich Village. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. No, I was no, no. I was on the stage and where you you first um where where your first mic was at? Yeah yeah it was over there. Uh, um, um, I believe the Greenwich Village uh, comedy, comedy Club. Club. Yeah yeah I was in there. Yeah, I did just, a, just a quick bomb, bomb a quick six uh quick six minutes. Mm-hmm. I was good for two. Uh, so it I mean, was. It's a mic. You don't really do it's that. It's a mic. No, it yeah. does, it's not too. But you know, you're trying out new material right. over there. But you know, the su- the silence. I, I've gotten comfortable with it. But there's right. certain times in which you're not too comfortable in your material. You're still trying to find certain things and mm-hmm. how things work. So you know, it was one of those sort of situations. The thing with me when it comes to you know going back to the balancing the day job, the stand up, all of that stuff. I mean, I, we've both had our fair share of day jobs. You worked at the uh, airport. Yes. Right. You also worked at like a bike shop at one point. Yes, time. indeed. You had any other day jobs besides that? Um, outside, I worked at Dollar Tree for maybe about three months, but it was very on and off. Got they you. just called me and, and then, it was like, "Come in." Yeah, yeah. You, it was like, you. "Oh, come in." Oh, you awake? Yeah, come in. Come uh, Four a.m. I'm like, through. okay. Then yeah. I pull up. Somebody else just walk in and clock in when they wasn't on the schedule. Now, oh, <laughs> go home. I'm like, wait, but well, I'm scheduled <laughs> to be here. And I had to walk home from Brownsville. But we can talk about that. That's right terrible. So Four with, with, with me, oh, that's 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 oh yeah yeah With me, you know, I mean, a lot of people know from the video. I had the McDonald's thing before. Before that, my first real day job that I ever had, this was before I started doing stand-up. I was working at Toys R Us, mm-hmm. and then I was working like with kids or whatever the case may be. And then now, like, uh, my pops has a family business, uh, kitchen and bath store, so I'm really there. So I'm able to, you know, uh, uh, I juggle that along with stand-up. But, I mean, it, it's – when I was working at McDonald's, it was uh, – I'm grateful for the situation because, like, at the time, I didn't really have... I was so young, bro. I was, like, like 18, 19, yeah. so I didn't really have shit to talk about. Mm-hmm. Working there gave me, like, 
my first real life experience in terms of dealing with people and just the bullshit that comes with day job and stuff like that. And I was able to translate that into material that I still use to this day. I still talk about my experience working yeah. there, right? And then from there, that kind of had a snowball effect into me going into more of my personable material that I have now. So that's cool. But when you talk about the grind, like you said, it's 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 taxing, man, because like oh, the, yeah. you can't, and I've heard a bunch of professional stand-ups say this, like you cannot make it in this game unless like you're full time it's impossible mm -hmm. you can't be going to work and then like bouncing around because like in order to to succeed as a stand-up uh, ironically enough there's so much stuff that you have to do outside of the stand-up you do it yourself to, from the the content creation the mm -hmm. podcast that we're doing right now it's yeah. contributing to our stand-up careers mm -hmm. all those things come into you know the stand-up comedy grind but you know you gotta you clock in a nine to five and especially with some day jobs where like you have to work the night shift oh yeah so oh, you gotta yeah. like there's some nights where you can't take a show that you might want to take because mm -hmm. you know you got uh gotta pay rent or some shit or you gotta get money it, it, it's rough fortunate for us however you know because of our living situations we're both coming from haitian backgrounds for those who don't know oh, it we, we we're able to Th us not working well i mean even though i work i don't really get paid like that we ain't talking about that right now oh but, wait a minute no, wait, yeah, we talk about conversation yeah off, no, no, off, off camera anyway but um because we both live up <laughs> we'll talk about it we'll talk about that 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 um, j just to close things out, like, um, you know, uh, uh, what was I about to say? Fuck, 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 fuck. When it comes to, uh, because we live with, uh, you know, family, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, we're not in the same, I guess, tight situation as some other people. Like, you know, most, majority of stand-up comedians in the city aren't from the city. Yep. They come here from another, mm -hmm. you know, state. So they got to get rent out of an apartment with, like, eight other people. The rent is, like, 2600 and fucking. So they have to work. They yeah. really don't have a choice because yeah. the money's not coming in from stand-up yet. Mm -hmm. You're not getting paid from whatever other else thing that you're doing so you got to get that job at fucking dunkin donuts or uh uh, uh pet co or where, wherever it is that you're working fortunate for us we're blessed in, in in a position to where like we don't have as many bills that kill us but and so we're able to be a little bit more frugal mm. and tight with the way we do things but all in all man this, the stand-up comedy grind it, it's it's um it's 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 different it's different i, I don't wait you said you get your money from like patrons and yeah. like things yeah. that nature. i have patrons i have a uh, youtube checks that do come in right uh ridiculously much smaller than what they were in uh 2011 what happened and i wasn't on youtube okay uh, well apparently it's gotten um i think it's somewhat inflated it okay. varies depending on what you do mm -hmm. see since i do comedy we're just oh yeah they're not that important but if i was a beauty blogger so let's Hilarious. just say yeah if, if i I, I, I probably should start out my videos the first two minutes just, and you put a little eyeliner and look at my highlight. And all of a sudden, bam, who's getting paid? I'm getting paid. But, there you go. You know, um, Man. it's I, I get my money here and there. Got and then, you. you know, it's just I don't try to spend, but somehow my credit cards max up. But we, regardless, we about you know, that. you're just over here. You're grinding. You're working. We're doing what and we you just do, hope man. there's a – there's a possibility it'll pay off, and, you know? and that's what we're doing. We're doing this podcast. We're trying to get it through. But on this podcast mm -hmm. that we're doing for the stand-up comedy ground, we don't just talk about comedy. Oh no, we don't. We don't, we don't just talk about real shit. Yeah, fifty percent. We gotta get to that. We gotta get to that sports man. It's a lot that's happened since episode. Episode was it? We on three now, right? Yeah, we on three. This is a lot that's happened since episode number two. Yeah, yeah. Well, not a lot. There's one thing in particular that shook the game up, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I'm gonna say his name one more time. Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say his name is Russell Westbrook is now a Houston Rocket. Oh yeah, but not 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 by free agency. No 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 no. He was traded mm -hmm. for CP3. Oh man. And now we have a tale of, of two cities: Oklahoma City. They get CP3. Houston, Texas. They get Russell Westbrook. I gotta ask you. Which team do you think got the better side of the deal? Houston, without question. Why is that? You just brought in a, a dynamic point guard who's much younger by, I believe, four years, five years, mm -hmm. maybe. His playing style, um, although defensively, his tenacity is not as good as um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Chris Paul because a lot of people, they just think Chris Paul plays the passing lanes. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, he's uh, top two uh, greatest um, defensive guards really? all around. Okay. All around. I shouldn't have said defensive, but uh, uh, both offense and defense. Gotcha. Um, because, number one, you probably would have a Gary Payton uh, and then number two, at least from point guard, I shouldn't say just say guard all around, mm -hmm. but um, from offense, defense, you have a Gary Payne. I'd put Chris Paul there because if you look at the defensive teams that he's made, right? Um, he he's up there. Gotcha. gotcha so gotcha. Uh, if I had to pick a point guard who'd go both ways, I, I definitely want Chris Paul. However, um, Russell Westbrook, 
a dog. This man is a, a dog. dog. And his a walking relentlessness. Trip a walking trip Because dog, I, man. although a lot of people have questions of how his game is going to translate to, um, because he needs the ball in his hand, mm-hmm. and James Harden, obviously, we see of 21 of the 24 seconds on the shot clock, he <laughs> has the ball in his hand. But I, I think because they have played before, and they both are alpha males, yeah, okay. however, they'll be able to, somebody's going to have to sacrifice, and more importantly, I think both of them ultimately will. I think James Harden's his number's going to go down from averaging 36 mm-hmm. to probably Probably about 29, gotcha. maybe even staying at 30. But mm-hmm. we'll see Russell Westbrook's assist numbers go a little bit higher, but his scoring might go down. So who knows how it'll play out. But ultimately, I think the Houston Rockets won the trade because there's no sort of risk that is here. Right. And I, for OKC, you got a ton of draft picks. Yeah, I agree with you. I know uh, OKC was actually talking about moving Chris Paul. I think mm-hmm. they're having a little bit of difficulty. Yeah, but they refuse. They're, they're refusing. So from what I heard, they're refusing to move the draft picks. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't think they're going to move. They, you know, they're trying to have a fresh start. That's exactly why they were trying mm-hmm. to move Chris Paul. But we talk about who got the better side of the trade easily, uh, the Houston Rockets. Here's the deal. I think they got the better side of the trade, but we can all come to, and you talk, touched on it a little bit. In order for this to work, obviously one of the other is going to have to change their play style. Yeah. You know, we both know that they're ball-dominant guards. Mm-hmm. Um we both know the, the the level of veracity and the intensity that Russell Westbrook plays with, and we also know, uh, you know, the play style that James Harden has, where he he essentially has to have the ball in his hand, you know, to be able to make plays for his team. But I think that is going to be possible. I think if you have to choose between which of the two is going to have to take a step back, it's going to have to be Russell Westbrook, just yes. for the simple fact that his decision making as a basketball player and his ability to knock down jump shots, mm-hmm. which isn't all that great. It's not that great. It, it, you can't lean on that and then ask mm-hmm. James, hey, can you, can, you, can you tone it down a bit? Yeah. James Harden's play style is much more effective for today's NBA and for that Houston Rockets team, so you're definitely going to have to ask Russell yeah. Westbrook to yeah. take a step down. I think so that's where you, you now transition and look at a guy like Mike D'Antoni, who came out and said that they ain't changing shit. Yep. Mind you, he said this after the trade, mm-hmm. not before. He said that they ain't changing shit. So I have a little bit of a cause for concern on mm-hmm. that. But cause to pause. Cause to pause. But at the end of the day, I think that it's going to take him a little bit of time to, to to mesh. You know, I think that this is a bigger move than people are making it are, are making it out to be. So I think that they're going to have a bit of a rough start earlier on in the season. But I'll say right before All-Star break is when you're really going to see them Agreed. start to develop that chemistry. And they love each other, man. Mm-hmm. They, they played with each other on OKC. They're, they're clearly both very happy about this move, especially James, not only because he's getting rust, but yeah. because of he's, he, yeah, he's getting rid of ball. Yes. But now, I, I, can we can we now go on record to say that this is, like when we look across the NBA, Chris Paul and, and uh, excuse me, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook and James Harden are now one of many dynamic duos yes. that, have, that, that are now within the NBA mm-hmm. because of all the free agency moves that come in. We've heard a lot of talks. We've heard a lot of discussions about uh, some of the more dynamic duos that are uh, our present in the NBA going into next season. I got to ask you, going into the next season, if you had to give us a top five, we could go back and forth with it from mm-hmm. five to five, four to four. Who is your top? Who are your top five duos going into the okay, next NBA? Okay, um, I'll start go from number five. <clears throat> we'll start with five. So five, I have uh, Little and McCullum. L- really? Lillard and McCollum. Yes. L- Lillard and McCollum. L- L- Lillard and McCollum. Say that fast three times. L- L- Lillard and McCollum. L- All right. Yeah, exactly. Sound a little exactly. Suspect. Yeah. Sound a little it sounds suspect. like you're trying to do Cullen Lingus. But whoa, whoa, whoa. So basically, whoa. Um, <laughs> out in Portland, they are an established mm-hmm. um, duo. Uh, top three uh-huh. um, backcourt. Okay. In the NBA, in yes, my sir. opinion, mm-hmm. um, now not so much. But okay. coming into the season, had nothing happened in free agency, nothing happened in the um the off season, right. they would be considered a top three. You can make the argument. Sometimes okay. people would leave them out, but you can make the argument. But um, they have been consistent when it comes to scoring. You've seen this year they got as far as they could possibly get. Mm-hmm. Um, over the past couple of years, getting to the conference finals. Unfortunately, they did have to um you know run into the uh, the janitors. Okay. And they got swept. But <laughs> they did their um, they did their job, mm-hmm. and when we come up, when we talk about duos, mm-hmm. you can't have a top five and not have Lillard and McCullum on there. So I got them at five. They're at the bottom of the um the top five. From my five, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Russ and James. I'm gonna say Russ and James. Hey, we whoa, give me something now. Give me something now. Now I'm talking. About, wait, hold on. Are you making your top five with like? Are we are we including people players who are injured or no? No, no, not yeah. I'm not no. Okay, got you. I am. Okay, all, all right, right, fair enough. So if we go on players, that's why you'll see as I as I'm mm-hmm. I'm going Russ and James. Um, you got two players. Uh, 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 
with MVP pedigree. Mm-hmm. You got two players that are are, are ballers, bucket getters. I mm-hmm. mean, like I said, you, you we see the intensity. The man is a walk. He can get a triple double in his sleep. Same thing for James Harden. He's a walking fifty point game, just waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. I think, like I said, in terms of what we're gonna see from them as a team, as as a duo this upcoming season, and just at what they are as talents. Because, like I said, I am also including players who are injured. These guys can be can can I think can go head to head with any duo within the NBA, but it all falls in the hands of Mike D'Antoni and how he's going to uh, uh, adjust if he decides to, which it seems like he's not uh, mm-hmm. going into the season. But I got them at number five. Number four, who you got? I got um, Embiid and Ben Simmons. Okay. <clears throat> now, I got, okay. Um, I got them because, well, Philly right now, the way things are set up over there, a lot of people talking about them possibly being the favorite in the East, and I okay. agree. Now, it all falls on the health mm-hmm. of Joel Embiid, and Ben Simmons, I believe he will continue to improve. Now, he okay. needs to be able to, you know, work that jump shot. But when we talk about the East, this is my only duo from the East that okay. cracks the top five. Okay. And Joel Embiid, he's got to make sure his health is intact. He can't Most be showing up to work. Looking like this. Looking like this. Chopped up. All right? He can't be out here falling off of bikes. Camera? All right? Be... <laughs> nah, they need to see it because okay. people are going to be wondering, have you been cooking yourself? Are you, are you a cannibal? Are you going to eat yourself? Suicide. But basically, yeah. you know, Embiid and Simmons – I'm going to have them come at number four because, hey, they're going to be the best team in the East. You got to have a team in the East on the best duo. I'm going KD, Kyrie. I'm going KD, Kyrie. The only reason it, <laughs> why we look so disappointed. Yeah, because there's no KD next year. I know, but that's so, what I'm saying. I'm not including injury. Yeah, yeah, fair I, enough, fair, fair enough, fair you enough. You are listed totally mm, fair. I'm yeah, not fair, including fair injury. Enough. The only reason, and even the, if given the severity of his injury, mm-hmm. this is, of course, why he's as mm-hmm. low as he is. Uh, uh, on the list, but man, listen, like I said before, I've been saying this since the last episode, leg hanging off the bone, paralyzed from the waist down. I don't care if he, if he can't, you, if he can only shoot with his left pinky, you, you give that, you, the Knicks should have gave that man the max point blank period because he's a bucket getter. The kind of game that he plays is a finesse game and he's a, he's, he's a, he has guard like skills in a center's body. The man seven, one, even though he's frank, he's skinny as shit, seven, one, could shoot from from the parking lot, unstoppable, and you pair him up with Kyrie Irving, easily one of, if not the best ball handler in the game. Also another bucket. Why you? Why you? What you? What you doing? I'm trying to why figure out to... how you would shoot. It don't matter. Shoot. Okay, it's number KD. Four. He gonna figure okay. it out. Okay. I got him at number four, man. Number okay. three, who you got? Number three, I got Westbrook and Harden. Okay. Now, I have them at number three because, again, the only reason why I don't have them any higher, uh, you have the questions of D'Antoni. But both MVP, Easy. Uh, um, they both have MVP, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, the background that Got is you. there, having them, having had that. And then in the West mm-hmm. and knowing how the one-two punch is essential. Yep. And I think both of them will be able to, you know, you know, have their way. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if it comes to jump shooting, just get the ball away from Westbrook. <laughs> he turns into Brick. Westbrook. Yeah, he's helping um, build the wall down there. So, there you go. Yeah, he's gotten closer <laughs> to the South because, you know. But, yeah, basically, um, <coughs> yeah, I got him at number three. Okay. My number three, Stephen Clay, man. I got to go. Is that, what is what's the issue? Why every time I tell you what's on my list? I know, but he's coming back this season. Unlike Katie, he's actually coming back this season. I, he, he will be back. It's yeah. going to be later on this season. Yeah. Probably either like right before playoff time. But the fact of the matter is, man, we say it all the time. Everybody and their grandmother, along with their auntie, sisters, aunt, cousin, knows this. I'm talking about one of the great, the greatest shooting backcourt of all time. Mm-hmm. Talking about two of the greatest shooters of all time. Mm-hmm. Arguably one and two. Some people will yeah. put them. I would. All right. You're talking about two do a, a guy in Steph Curry, who, in my opinion, is poised to have an MVP-esque season Agreed. coming up. You understand what I'm saying? And because of the style and the kind of game that Clay plays, when he does come back from the ACL, will it take him some time to get back into the rhythm things? Absolutely. But this is not a physical, athletic, Skywalker kind of guy. This is a dude who, who, who's, a, who's a spot-up shooter. We're talking about a man who dropped, what is it, 40, 50, 60, I don't even know how much, with like nine dribbles yeah, or something like that. Ridiculous. You, you got to put him at number three. Okay. They could, they should, would, and could be higher if it wasn't for the two duos I'm about to get into mm-hmm. next. But we'll get into that after you. What's your okay. number two, man? My number two. Oh, you know, and my dude, list does it? not no number two. Yeah. My list does not include the um the light skin splash brothers. There's no <laughs> magic carp on my list because wow. um Clay's gonna come back and he's gonna play half of season. And as good as Clay is, mm-hmm. we talk about the top five duos in the league. Mm-hmm. I can't put half a season Clay and a full season Steph over these guys. Fair but number two, I got Kawhi and PG. Mm-hmm. And um the reason why I don't have them um number one. Now we still do have good two way uh, uh players <clears throat> that are here. Two of the best players in the league. In fact, two out of the top three MVP candidates from last year. But the only reason why I have them at number two is because 
the other team in L.A., I just think it's just going to be a little bit more dynamic, man. The Clippers got a hell of a team. However, I don't think Kawhi and PG will mesh as good as people expect them to. They still will be exceptional. But I think there's just going to be another duo on the other side of the Staples Center who just, you know, they put in a little bit more work. All right. But they will be exceptional. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be you're gonna be your eyebrows gonna be going through your hairline watching PG and Kawhi. But hey, I just got them at number two. At number two, I got who I know is your number one, LeBron and AD. Okay. Just for the simple fact mm-hmm. that, like I said in my last in the, in the last episode, I talked about why I have LeBron as the second best player going into the league under Kawhi for the same reason why I'm saying that they're the number two duo. At the end of the day, uh, a lot of people forgot just what this man LeBron James can do because of the fact that he missed the playoff for the first time since I think like 2003 or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Because of the fact that you know he uh, uh, he dealt with the injury that he dealt with, people are questioning his age, this, that, and the third. LeBron James, once he comes back, I'm, I'm probably going to move him back up to one. But for right now, until I see it, until everyone else sees it, you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to have to put it out to by default, not because of anything yeah. else, just by default. But pairing him up with AD, I mean, my goodness, you want to talk about I think it's going to be Lob City. Oh, I yeah, understand what I'm saying. Uh, we're going to see more uh, LeBron James <clears throat> is going to come into the season that's going to play not going to be as ball dominant as he as uh, the Lakers probably wanted him to be going into uh, last season. He's going to be more of a facilitator, setting other people up with a Danny Green, mm-hmm. with a, even though we're talking about the duo, we still got to talk about this, with the Danny Green, with all the other pieces that they added. I think this is number two duo, man. Number one, I, I already know who you got number one. Yeah, number one, I got Braun and uh, AD. Why? Uh. Because uh, Braun's hair, uh, hair is disappearing and AD's, you know, his <laughs> unibrow has a lot of hair in the middle that he can get rid of. So because they complement each other so well, Ah. There's no way you can stop these guys from yep. being number one. Now, again, going to what you said, you got Lob City going down over there. And on yep. top of that, you got two of the top five players in the NBA, undisputed. The thing is, Kawhi's a top five player, undisputed. Mm-hmm. However, Paul George, he's not quite there. Top 10, without question. Top five, I can't put him there. Um, With everybody. I'm talking about everybody. Last season, without question, top mm-hmm. five. But we're talking about, hey, we got all the best players in the league healthy. Mm-hmm. He's not there. Gotcha. But um, with AD, hey, you can make the argument between top seven but hey paul george not part of that conversation but they're gonna light it up man sport staples center gonna be looking like staples all right they're gonna be a whole lot of lobs it's gonna be looking crazy right now all right Uh, it's gonna be the place you want to be at number one i got Kawhi and pg for the simple fact that you talking about two of the two of the best two-way players in the game today and oh by the way the team the, the duo that you have at number one the guy lebron james you got a Kawhi Leonard. You know, a guy who's very familiar with Garden LeBron James. You you know that. Uh, a guy in uh, Paul George is also very familiar with locking up. Well, not locking up, but Garden LeBron James. You know that. You understand what I'm saying? Two of the two, two best two-way players in the game today. A guy in a Kawhi Leonard who's coming off of a finals MVP and a championship run with the Toronto Raptors. A guy in PG who's coming off of one of the best seasons. If not the, I think, no, it's the best season of his entire career. I believe so. I would say yeah, so, yes. Because he would, you know, you understand what I'm saying? I, I you can't you just can't I know I know know your concerns a lot of with, along with a lot of other people's concerns about you know both them being I guess somewhat ball dominant Kawhi yeah. doesn't necessarily need the mm-hmm. need to play with the ball in his hands but in PG we already know how that goes but I, I just for me you got two players that are in their prime right now have easily sent the Clippers to be in the number one position to go and make a championship run I'm going no I'm going Kawhi and PG fair enough as the number one clip but that. Enough. Conclude. Oh, they loud outside. Oh, yeah. They, they loud oh, outside. Yeah. We probably going to have to slap box when the camera's done. No, nah, I don't but, know about that. Uh, I think they're having an orgy, but well, nonetheless. Nonetheless, <laughs> that concludes episode number three of the Whole My Nuggets podcast. Tune into episode number four. Where we, we gonna, it's going to get real. It's, yeah. It's gonna, we're going to yeah. touch it on, on yeah, the we're very, going. We're going to uh, 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 football. Yeah. We, uh, he's going to get passionate. Yeah, my field of expertise. I don't know shit. <laughs> so I'm going to just be I'm gonna just be bounce off it. But uh, nonetheless, thank you again for tuning in to episode number three. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, share with it. Uh, Show love. Do all that. Yeah, all right. Yeah. As always, this is the podcast. 50% sports, 50% real shit, 100%, 100% of the time. time. And if you don't like that, you can hold my nuggets. Suck my dick. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>